Good evening. It's 6 30. We have a quorum. We'll call the planning board meeting to order. Mr. Dwyer has been keeping track of who's been signing in and what order, so I'll let him okay. rattle them off. Uh, Don Friedrich was the first one here, so you're up, Don. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Um, we are had submitted a uh, a &R plan for um, Commonwealth of Mass Department of Agricultural Resources on the property of Robert. And, you're, uh, you're really, Mr. Frederick, you're really distant. Could you speak a little louder or something? Sure. Is that any better? That's better. All right. So we submitted an A&R plan for approval on the property of Robert and Peter Naval on um, East Street, uh, Department of Agricultural Resources. Um, I don't know. Can I share my screen so everybody can see it? Is that okay? You're distant again. You keep fading out. Okay. I will. I will enable screen sharing for you. Okay. It actually says host disabled participant screen sharing. So, so I just uh, enabled it. Okay. What's what number East Street is this? Um, it is at um, one thirty six. Close enough. Yeah. And I had uh, set a copy of this around to everyone when it arrived okay so basically we've uh, surveyed the perimeter of the property and divided it into two lots lot one uh added note that uh, lot two is not a residential building lot at this time um based on the um minimal frontage that it has but lot one um is a conforming building lot um so basically we're looking for your endorsement for an a and r for this Is this, is this the land that's been put in APR? Um, it has not yet, but it will be. Um, that's what the process that we're going through now. Right. So the, the lot one, is that the homestead that's being carved out? That's correct. Okay. Kind of straightforward for what APR does. So I'll, make a, I'll make a motion to sign the APR. I'll second. Second. Motion a second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. So, Jim, do you want to calculate the filing fee? I think you told him what it was going to be already. Yeah. How many feet was that between the two lots? One was 200. You're looking for the frontage of the lots? Yeah, the frontage on the on the APR lot and then the, the other building lot at 200, right? The building lot is 200. Um, the other one is 129.4. There's also an 18-foot <coughs> okay. frontage on the, on the second lot to the most northerly corner of the lot. If you had uh, quoted 2250 when you looked at it last time. Okay. Call it 2250. All right, that's good. That'll be the filing fee. Okay. And the process from getting you the mylar and signatures from here is you could you could either bring the, the mylar and the the, the uh, drawings to um, Bill, Joe, or myself. Either any any of the three of us can sign them off. Okay. I've been actually emailing with Bill, so if that's okay with him, we can make arrangements after the meet or tomorrow even. Yeah, we'll work something together. out. That's fine. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Tom Reedy was up next. Thanks a lot, uh, Mr. Dwyer. Good evening, everyone. Um, here on Keith Rabine's A&R. Uh, for maybe the fifth time, hopefully the last time. Uh, we had the surveyor update the plans to show the frontage of that larger lot. It's 211 feet. Uh, and then the frontage of the lot on North Maple Street is 175 feet. So you've got two lots there. And so this is separate and distinct from having to come back in front of you for a special permit um, we are having some conversations with one of the property owners on Rocky Hill 
to see if we even need to come uh, before you for, for that. So that remains to be seen, but the first step is really just dividing this property into two properties. Hopefully, uh, Mr. Maximowski was able to get you and you were able to look at the, the larger plans. Um, happy to answer any questions that you have. Hey, Tom, the, the, the plan I'm looking at shows the one small lot one, which is in front of the, is that Elaine Manor? There, or one of it? Yes. And then the lot two is the one that, that spins around that and has the wetlands. What is the parcel above that? Is that not like a lot three or? It's the parcel above that is not part of um, the land that Keith owns. So that's, okay. I think so it's owned by there. Albert just, and Tom Lees. I all think. right, so that's just there for information. Correct. Okay. I, um, I'm not sure what everyone else thinks, but um, this seems to have the frontage, but um, there's a bunch of information on here that looks like it's wetlands, but there's no legend that identifies what the symbols are. And if it's all wetlands, then from my understanding from the um, A&R um, guidebook that the state issues, that we would not accept this because uh, what there was a, there was a case back in 2000 in the town of Dighton where the court decided that the wetlands prevented you from having an ex, you know uh, forgotten the exact wording I can find it you know adequate access to non illusory access it's it's typically yeah. actual non illusory access is yeah. the touchstone right and that uh, gates versus dighton they talked about you know they were going to have to use bridges and to get over the wetlands and it said that in the guidebook said that in 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 court the engineer you know conceded that it would have been a environmental i believe it said disaster or calamity and a economic or an e you know, economic calamity it looks like that's what we have here that's just my opinion well so, does the fact that it's wetland prevent us from giving an a and r and splitting the property are you saying then that because it's wetland that he couldn't sell off 175 frontage of this property as it would it's it's not a if the a and r gives any indication that it's it's a viable lot no no, it doesn't. The, no, no. An A and R plan simply means he's dividing. The person is dividing the lot into two parcels. Nothing well, in an A, nothing in approval did signify that it is a buildable lot. It is simply dividing a parcel into two, and that it meets zoning. Both parcels meet zoning. That's all we're signifying. It, it meets zoning as far as frontage on North Maple Street. It doesn't necessarily meet. The rest of the zoning requirements or conservation requirements. Well, it may not be a buildable lot, but that's, that's not what we're speaking to. No. And there is no. a notation on the plan way off on the left side that um, planning board approval does not indicate the lot is buildable. So I don't, I'm not familiar with the facts of the case you cited, Mark, but um, my sense is that. Um, e we, we have a market for farmland in Hadley. So yeah. even if the parcel two is unbuildable in the long run, it is still a saleable, a separately saleable lot and it has frontage. So uh, I'm satisfied that it, um, it meets the statutory definition. And I guess there's enough steps that would have to go through if they wanted to make it a buildable lot. Yeah, I think that that's, you know, that they would have to go through wetlands or such. The, the only thing that I've seen ever where a A&R plan has been denied and has been upheld was when there was a ravine hmm. right next to the road, the right of the, the black and white, the right of way road. And between the lot and the road, there was this 
call it a deep ravine, whatever that might mean, that prevented access to the lot. The planning board of that town, at Tom Kapoor it was, it was a few years ago that this occurred, that the ravine and the planning board refused to sign a say, citing it was not accessible, and that was upheld in court to my knowledge. Right. And that was... Yeah, and that's typically, I, I don't remember where that was, but anytime you have like a, a ravine, uh, a guardrail, things that are like physical impediments, or if you had the right of way, and then you had a steep slope going up, you know, and then you plateaued at the top, that's not actual access. And so it, it looks on the plan like it's access, access, but it's illusory access. And so that's really what the court looks at here. I, I, I'm not as concerned about the existence of those wetlands, especially given that you can essentially alter up to 5,000 square feet without even needing any Army Corps of Engineers. So there's, and that even if you alter more than 5,000, um, you, you can still do it. It just takes a little longer because you're going through the Army Corps. And I'm, I've got a little bit of a compromise. And out of that uh, handbook for a and uh, one of the judge recommended, in order to make things perfectly clear, uh, these words were recommended. No determination of compliance with zoning requirements has been made nor intended. If that were put on there, I would feel comfortable in signing it. That's So I guess my response, we do have a note on the plan. Planning board's endorsement is not a determination that the lots shown are buildable lots, right. which I think effectively gets you to the same place yeah. um, as, as the language that you cited. Right there. Yeah. I mean, I'm satisfied with the wording on a lot that it's not a buildable. It does appear to meet zone. It does meet zone from what we can tell. It has a front yet. It has the square footage. It has the square. Beyond that, it, it remains to be seen. That, that's up to a number of boards. So if he decides to build a house at the west side and negotiate some access to Rocky Hill, that has to come back. That'll be a special permit. Okay. Yeah, because certainly there's going to be wetlands issue. There's the uh, steep of the slope for egress on the Rocky Hill Road. Uh, what's the deline delineation of the uh, 200 foot or 40,000 square feet in aquifer, aquifer protection area? So there's a lot of questions to be answered, and that would come out in the special permit, I assume. Correct. Okay. okay. All right. So I'll make a motion to uh, sign the APR or the ANR. ANR. Second. A motion a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thanks okay. a lot. Uh, and I'll stick around because you're going to be talking about the Affordable Housing Trust later, I assume? A little bit, uh, yes. It might, yeah, uh, it could, could come up. The I mean, I don't, it it may not. Okay. I, I'm, I don't need to stick around, Bill. You've got, and I think I sent this to the planning board email. You've got um, where we're at as far as East Street Commons and how much is uh, out there. And I did look at the TDR, um, and so I can come back because he hasn't. I don't think he's hit the 50 bedrooms yet. Uh, I think he sold 26 of them, and he said not all of them are two bedroom. And so if they were two bedroom, we'd be at 52. But understanding they're not all two bedroom. We're probably under the 50, which from that uh, permit was that tipping point for the TDR. So if I'm, I'm happy to stay and talk, but if, if you're not going to talk about it, then. I think we have a pretty full agenda tonight, so we may just touch on it to update everyone on where we are, but I don't think we're going to resolve anything on that tonight. I'm going to go uh, play Tom. pirates with my daughter. So I'll just see a minute, Tom. Have fun. Tom, Tom, wait a minute. Yeah. Yes, the I'm filing okay. fee on your A and R plan. Yes, is fifty dollars and thirty one cents. And I can have either you, Bill, or Joe sign it, and I'll I'll figure out when I can get it from David Engberg, and then I'll coordinate with you. Correct. Yes. Yeah, that's fine. Perfect. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye. Okay, we have the Matralka Solar Array up next. Hi. This Hi. is. Judy and George Matroka, we live at Two River Drive. 
Um, we're on the river side of Route 47, just opposite where Halley Place comes out. And we're interested in putting a, a ground-based solar array in our backyard. Uh, we have here our project manager from PV Squared. And I, I, as much as possible, I'll let her do the talking because she's the expert in this. Are you there, Janine? Muted. Bring your mic on. I'm here. That's better. So I'm assuming everybody received the package I sent to you, Bill. I forwarded it to, to everyone. It's yeah. uh, got it. So it's a pretty straight um, yeah, on a Sun Moto um, system is, is the base. So it's two rows of 20 each. So for a total of 40 modules, um, that's a 14.4 kilowatt DC system. Um, Going to be tied in at the garage um, with a tap. And, um, you know, I think I've got enough photos in the package. You can get a sense of, you know, what the lay of the land is there, uh, all directions. And we do have a few trees around, but um, we're still getting somewhere between 83 and 87% exposure, which is great. So they're going to get a good return on that. Um, roughly 70 feet long by about 10 feet wide. I'm going to try to get it about in the middle of that big open space in the backyard uh, for the best exposure and to stay away from property lines, river, etc. cetera. Um, I don't know if you guys have specific questions right off the top. Just how close is it to the to the river? So it's about 55 feet or so from the property line. Um, and then there's, I don't know, what would you say, Judy and Joe, maybe 30, 20 or 30 feet of flat before it drops off and goes down the bank? It, yeah, it drops and then it levels and it drops again. And right. it's, it's kind of stepped, right. Yeah. You, our approval for this plan doesn't supersede anybody else's. You may need to go to the Conservation Commission right. because you're so close to the river. Right. Yeah, so I did I did include in there a sheet that shows, um, you know, the habitat issue. Um, so it does sit in that rare habitat um, okay. that shows up on the – so I figured they would, they would pick that out first, and I don't know exactly, you know, what kind of response – if well, you'll, you'll need to file with the you'll need to file with the conservation commission. Is this, thought, is this? Sorry, I thought uh, it was sent to them automatically. Sending it to we ours giving it to them does not does not designate a filing. You physically need to go to the conservation commission and tell them what you're going to do. Okay. Is this okay. floodplain? Is this hundred year floodplain? No, we're above that. We're we're actually we're not on the dike, but we're at the same. We're a little bit higher than the dike. So you can uh, contact Janice Stone at conservation at hadleyma.org. Okay. Um, we haven't circulated this to everything to everyone okay. yet. We're considering that this is your filing date. Okay. So uh, we will send it around to um, everyone who is on the list. They have 35 days to review it, right? which means that we can't put you on for August 18th, but we'll put you on for uh, Is that the 8th of September, uh, September 1 for the review day. Number one. Okay. Just out of, just out of curiosity on the panels, what size, what, what are the dimensions of each panel? Roughly. Um, these are 61.3 inches by 41.2 inches. Okay. And there are 20 so, so they're, row they're and about, then the second row. They're about 70, 720 watts each. Wow. Oh, well, these are, um, sorry, let me just check. These are 360 watts. Oh, 360 watts yep. each? Yep. So 360 times 40, because there are two rows of 20. Okay. So that's how you get your DC. That's. 
A curiosity question. Uh, probably Randy Isaac can answer it. The, uh, even though it may not be in the flood, would it be designated in the flood way that is adjacent to the Connecticut River? No, Joe, it's not. Not floodway either. No, the floodway okay. yeah. is worse than the flood plain. The floodway is where the water, the river rushes through. The flood plain is where it might back up. Right. So they're definitely in, in neither of those. Yeah. They just need to they just need to follow the conservation to, to cover the bases. That's all. You probably you probably don't have any problems, but it, but you'll need to no notify them because your simple proximity to the river. Yep. So so if the dike weren't there and we had a hundred year flood, you wouldn't be affected? <laughs> we're we're upstream of the, the dike. We're two houses away from where the dike starts. Okay. The, okay. the dike doesn't protect us in any way. We're sure. okay. we're above the level of the dike. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, contact the conservation commission and Janice Stone will tell you whether you need to uh she she does she is their uh, agent and uh, she will tell you if you need to file if you're close or if you don't need you know, she'll let you know sounds good you guys need any anything else from us right now no because this, this is a small grounded small ground mounted system that's not a special permit right bill correct it's right. an administrative just, review so just administrative can, review by the planning board we just have to circulate it to the plans to everyone on the list. And uh, once, the, uh, once the time has expired, if they, we don't hear back, um, you're good. All right, sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Thank Thank you. you. Thank you, Janine. Sure, have a good night. So looks like uh, we have Balloonis up next. Are we on? Yes, you're on. You're up. So we ha good evening, first of all. Uh, we have some questions. We think we have all of our ducks in a row as far as moving forward with our project, but due to the COVID-19, we don't know which direction to go. If there is, yeah, there even is a direction. The, the, the direction right now is we just sit tight waiting for approval to hold a public hearing where we can have live people in a room because right now we're limited to 25 people and regardless of the size of the room unless we hold it outdoors holding it outdoors is a effort that is superhuman and expensive for the town to do every time we have a public hearing so it's got it typically indoors and right now with the way the state is actually increasing in their cases it's not looking like we're going to be getting approval to do to hold public hearings above 25 people anytime soon. So basically, so, we're dead in the water. So I'll mention again, uh, I, I know uh, there's been a reluctance to do public hearings over Zoom, but if we're going to be uh, like this for a while i think uh we may want to look into it i know the conservation commission is doing public hearings over zoom and i'm seeing legal notices in other towns that are doing public hearings over zoom i realize not every public hearing is a candidate but um i throw it out there again that i think we could probably handle some of the public hearings like the accessory some of the accessory apartments over zoom my only concern is that what if someone doesn't have access to a computer to do Zoom? The question, Bill, the uh, Conservation Commission does not have to notify abutters that there is a something going on in the property next to them. Am I correct? No, I, they do. They don't notify abutters by certified mail, no less. I... I beg to differ. There was something going on right next to my property, and I never was notified, nor were any of the neighbors notified. Is no. that an error? Or I've been notified of uh, they. I suppose it depends on what level of of uh, hearing it is. If uh, uh, you, you can check with Janice Stone about your uh, what gets noticed and what doesn't, but I've certainly got uh, notices of 
hear about things going on with the butters. I, I think you can phone in as well, can't you? To these Zoom things, you 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 can if you don't have a computer, I think you can phone in. Phone uh, in to what? To, uh, to the host, I believe. Yeah, I think you can phone in exactly. And how does the host look, get? The, how does the host get the get their voice out to everybody so they can hear what's going on? I'm I'm just asking you, questions that I don't know. You yeah, show I don't know up. The, yeah. You see how happy media is blacked out. <clears throat> It shows up as a uh, a phone number, or maybe a name. And it's someone who can talk, but they can't, um, you know, they, they they can't be seen and they can't see what's going on. But they can, can hear. They, can they hear the public hearing? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Or, uh, By calling in. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they can. Okay, I didn't realize that. Well. Trust me, gentlemen, this is all new to us, too, so. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> you're not the only ones, obviously. I mean, I'd be willing to try it one time to see how it works out, um, but I have my reservation because I'm just concerned that if somebody w wants to speak out and they are not tech savvy, that it would be, you know, now what do we do? Well, I, I couldn't get into it, and I, I, have, I have concerns. Totally understandable. You know, so I, you, I don't want to put... I mean, I would hate to have the bonuses go through all of this or somebody else. I just use them as the example because they're right there. Only to find out somebody comes back a, a couple of days later. I couldn't get in. I have concerns. What do we do? Just give them the phone number. It's just as simple as dialing a phone number. Okay. So when they call... I'm, I'm asking a question. Would they call into Bill's home phone? Or no. What do they call into? There's a number on the invite, on, on the yeah, Zoom invite. And it's usually like an 800 number. or I can Watch check. This. Yeah, if somebody could access the invite, the numbers are there. You could try it right now. Watch yeah, this. The phone number is 312. Six two six six seven seven nine. Three one two six two six. Eight uh, six, no, seven, the, six seven nine nine. I'm calling it right now. That's the Chicago okay. number. Oh, that's right. <laughs> well, with the cell phone, it really doesn't matter. Right. If, if I can. Yes, can. You, you, you call the number up and you put the password in, and boom, you're there. Yeah. Um. So. Um. You know, I, I know that the board has been talking about. Um, the challenges of public hearings, and and um, the chair is correct that some boards have um, decided to hold off on them until the governor's orders lifted. Lifted. Some have started to have their public hearings. I think the biggest thing and the biggest concern is the ability to um, get on. Um, so, some of the boards that I'm working with are convening public hearings. However, it is um, the it's managed by the chair as to what public hearings, um, you know, something like accessory dwelling units um, versus like a, a big commercial project um, that would require a special permit. Um, I do think that um, it has been manageable from uh, my experience. Um, there's been a public hearing where there were 50 people on, um, and uh, you know there is some management as far as um, people being civil during it and and allowing the the presenters to present. Um, one of the other big things is uh, the legislation that the governor signed back in April is basically that the appeals period is held off until the um, the, until the, the, the order is lifted at 45 days after the order is lifted. So a lot of the approvals that towns are giving, um, assuming that uh, people are not appealing, are moving on with at risk. Um, so, I mean, th that's just something to consider for the board. Um, and that those are the smaller, the smaller special permits that are held via public hearing. Um, Ken, so in other words, if we... I want to, because the balloonist is there, I don't want, I'll just use them as the example. 
they want an accessory apartment application. Sure. So if we approve it during the COVID problem issues, then, and they decide 21 days later to move forward, that's not the 21 days. As long as we're under COVID, the appeals period will last until the COVID is done? Um, until the governor lifts the order. That's what the legislation is. I'll share it with the board. Um, it's very specific to permits that are approved. Um, I mean, I don't know what the sound, the sound that is. Um, so it's um, a, a matter of uh, um, ensuring that the applicant knows that there's this risk involved. Um, you know, obviously the applicant would be required to also get building permits. I'm not sure um, how the building permits work with, within the, the context of the um, emergency legislation, but um, it has been found with regards to special permits from the planning board and from other um, other other uh, government group or other uh, approval authorities um, that there is this um, period of that the appeal that basically everything is stopped in its tracks but public hearings are still being convened um, for the purposes of at least trying to clear the slate um, oh. but it's at risk it's at risk okay. Chad, what if, what if what so if it was agreed that we could have a meeting at the in the new Hadley Senior Center, which, by the way, is spacious? It's an open concept. You can see into the great the great hall, as I would call it, from other places in the building. Does everyone at a public hearing have to be in the same room, or can they be in different rooms? I haven't. I haven't actually um, been in any public spaces for these public hearings. Um, I know that. Some boards are only having it open for the um, board members to be present, um, but then also have the Zoom or the GoToMeeting virtual capability of um, being able to uh, get onto the, the, um, the meeting through phone call or through um, you know, what we're currently participating in. Um, so it's a matter of uh, you know, the, the comfortability of the town um, in doing this. I know that um, some town, uh, uh, yeah, so some town boards are convening. I'm not, I ha I'm not very aware of town boards that are convening with the public yet, um, but board members have been convening in, in a public space, obviously socially distant, um, you know, and, and working within the, the, uh, capabilities of the of the town facility i had okay. not been aware of the uh issue about the appeal period being stayed until 45 days after the emergency so that does cast a different light on it as to what's the point that we can yeah. get you a permit but you would be taking a risk exercising any rights under it now sometimes you could you could tell by your public hearing if neighbors come and are outspoken you have a sense that maybe you're at risk and if um, no one shows up or your neighbors send letters of support maybe you're can be comfortable you're not at risk but it won't be a clean approval right I, we agree so, so in other words what would i mean I, i'm going to picture a worst case scenario here that's very possible we give somebody an approval um Nobody really objects. The applicant proceeds at risk. The COVID is lifted. Somebody says, now I got them. And they file an appeal. Those, that poor applicant that has now put money into this project is suddenly dead in the water, if not worse. And they've got money tied up. The now is just sitting there that they can't touch until this appeal is done. And that can take a couple of years to be honest that is that's it, nasty yeah it is conceivable that you could complete while we're still waiting for the phases to pass you could complete the project um invent complete invest all your money uh have a completed project and then have to dismantle it right yeah <clears throat> that's 
I didn't realize the appeal period was uh, was uh, was extended as well. That's that puts like the the bill said so that puts a whole different light on it. We could hold a public hearing and actually unintentionally hurt applicants. Well, <clears throat> I think as long as they are aware of it and are willing to proceed at their own risk, um, we could take it up on a case by case basis because uh, one of our uh, next. Uh, one of our next visitors uh, may be in a position where they're willing to take a risk. Um, but as a practical matter, for most people, it, it's, yeah, it doesn't really give you anything to, you get a piece of paper that is, isn't, uh, isn't worth much more than what the paper it's on. Right. So do we have an idea when, the I guess the next phase for things to be opening up to do all this. Do we have any idea? Things I will I will just tell you what I know from the news, and this is purely from the news and not from any reliable source. That Massachusetts had been staying pretty steady and going down slightly in the COVID cases as of recently, namely yesterday and the day before. The Massachusetts COVID cases are now increasing. So that may put a different light on Baker's next phase, which is phase into phase three and phase four coming up. I don't know. I'm just I just noticed that the mass cases of mass are now rising. Right. So that's not a good sign. No. Okay. So basically we're kind of on hold, I guess. So further. Right. All right, um, we we've taken enough of your time. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, we're not trying to put anybody off. We're just, it, it, like you said, this is new to all of us. Oh, I hear right. you. We get it. We're I mean, we're, taxpayers never take too much of our time. <laughs> we're we're actually anxious to get going, but um, like Mr. Dwyer was saying, we don't need the le legal repercussions at the end. Yeah, I mean, I know where I know you. If I hear something that is that that's good coming down the road, I'll let you know. Okay, okay. that sounds good. Okay. So, if you have a situation where you have a family member that you're trying to find housing for, the uh, building inspector in another project, also an accessory apartment, uh, allowed the homeowner to put on the addition they were planning. Uh, but not to complete, it, it was not a complete uh, living unit because it didn't have a kitchen. They just uh, did not put the kitchen in and won't put the kitchen in until we could schedule the public hearing and go through the exercise. But if you wanted to put an addition on your house that wasn't a separate living area, uh, you may be able to proceed. Uh, you'll have to talk to the building inspector about how that fits in well we we have the plans drawn up of what we're doing and you know it's it just if it's not feasible at this time it's just not feasible okay we appreciate your time thank you gentlemen okay thank you okay you're welcome next up mr dwyer uh i think we are up to mr Iser. A very, very timely conversation. I'm here to find out when you're going to be able to have a public hearing. <laughs> <laughs> Can um, I hear it again? No, uh, no, I think I heard it enough of it. But what I'm here for is the state is starting to uh, make landowners aware of the widening of Route 9 process. So everybody that has property on Route 9 has gotten a letter stating that this is what we're planning to do. There'll be people coming to look at your property to appraise, et cetera, et cetera. So people who are going to be impacted by this, i.e. losing parking spaces, are going to be concerned about what they can do in terms of moving the parking spaces. Number one, to save their business. Number two, to figure out what it's going to cost when the time comes for, for determining value. So based on what I've heard, it's a moot point at this time. Um, you know, we can probably, you could do a 
a case by case basis and see, all right, this is what we're trying to do. And this is what we'll allow you to do. And then they could go and take that to a contractor and say, you know, how much is it going to cost me to, to move my parking, et cetera. And then they would have some numbers to, to work with the state with. Uh, I, I know of one person right now who's asked me about this and I'm sure there'll be more. So just be aware that there, there may be quite a bit of that coming. Does that mean you're going to be very busy, Randy? I guess. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. I would guess that 99% of these cases can be handled by waiving site plan approval because the changes will be so minor. Okay. All right. And, but if I know of one that wants to not be minor, I've talked to you about it before. It's uh, the Aegis property. She's going to lose a couple of spaces out front and then she wants to try to turn them 90 degrees to the way they are, but add more than she's got. Uh, so I don't know if you guys feel like that would be something that, uh, is zoomable or not. I, I guess we'd have to see the plan. I mean, I, I sincerely doubt that it would be a whole site plan approval. It would probably be a minor modification that we probably could do without a, uh, holding a special, holding a public hearing. All right. Well, I'll talk to her, get something together and get it to you guys. I mean, it's, we're talking a couple years down the road, more than likely before they really start doing anything, but how much land are they taking from you roughly? Uh, Randy, didn't we review this once? That you I, I don't, I don't remember Joe. I, I really don't remember, but anyhow, Jimmy, they're taking about eight feet on the South side and nine or 10 feet on the North side. I had somebody from the DOT at my property today explaining what they were doing. And he said, basically, the south side of the traveled way is going to stay where it is, then the three feet of grass, then to six to, the six to eight foot wide um, dual purpose path or whatever they call it, multi-purpose path. And it's basically going to be right up against the uh, Wildwood Barbecue side post. Okay. And they're going to, apparently, they're going to widen things on the north side and, well. and leave the road make sure your forward. clients make sure your clients don't rely on what the state tells them the value of the property being taken is they should go through a determination as to what the value of the business is and what's what's really being affected yeah okay. well that's that's something we yeah. talked about with the guy yeah. Yeah. so that's that all makes sense for sure so yeah. from our perspective uh waiver of further site plan approval or uh amendment in most cases of a prior site plan approval, we handle administratively anyway. Okay. We don't, uh, very rarely have we felt that we had to reopen site plan approval, um, uh, only if there are major changes in the design, such as, well, with the, uh, uh, the exotic auto in North Hadley, the yeah. original site plan approval and then the revised site plan approval was enough of a change to require reopening site plan approval. But um, a lot of things we can handle administratively, so we don't need to have schedule a public hearing. All right. Well, I'll get you something. It won't, I don't know when it'll be, month or two, whatever, and I'll get it to everybody and then you can decide how you want to proceed from there. Well, Randy, I may not be dreaming, but nevertheless, I thought that you did give us a presentation of Lisa's situation. And I think the, uh, the consensus was, won't reduce the number of parking, but neither will you be allowed to increase your parking. Do you re recall Jim or Bill? Uh, yeah, I, I don't. I know we, I know we, we, we talked it. about it. Yeah, we talked about it. I don't remember if I brought okay. you a plan or not, but I know we talked about that, Joe. But anyhow, I'll get it to you and then we can decide, you guys can decide how you want to proceed with it. Okay. All right? Yep. Okay. All right, great. Thank you all. Have a good night. Good night. Bye-bye. And next we have, uh, we'll get to you in a second, Ken, uh, Matthew McTeague from Hadleaf. You are muted at the moment. All right, I'm here, guys. Oh, how you doing? Good. Uh, Matthew McTeague, like you said, here with uh, Hadleaf Holistics. We are the we just secured the second uh, host agreement for dispensary in town of Hadley. Um, it's my understanding that we need to get a special permit 
Um, and you guys really just answered a lot of the questions about the Zoom meeting and, and needing to do all that in person. Um, my, my only other question is, as far as a special permit goes, do you guys require us uh, before we start any construction to obtain the special permit? Yes. Okay, yes. so before we start even working on the base, we need the special permit secured? Correct. Okay. And, uh, you know, I is heard this the one going in the mall? Yeah, that's correct. The mall, or is it the one going next to? Yes, yeah, in the okay, in the mall. Yeah, right yeah, we're in Hampshire Mall. Okay, so I don't know how the building department slices and dices things. So, if you were perhaps to be looking for a, a demolition permit, to no, start we're, we're doing the, very yeah, we're doing very minimal work. It, it's kind of already framed out. It was an old uh, vitamin shop, or I believe space. So it's really just, uh, you know, the, the major work is just sectioning off one of the walls for the safe and everything else is pretty much staying the same. We're not doing a major demolition, really, or anything like that. Oh, 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 so you're, okay, this is the one in the wall. This is the, so you're not building anything. You're, you're just taking a space and doing some changes to it. Yes, yes, exactly. Th this may fall into the category of doing it at risk. Yep. But before you could open or put any signs out or do anything for selling, you need the special permit. We need the, the special plan. permit for operations, right? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, I guess that that pretty much answers the question. As long as we're okay, you know, we're we were looking to just at least get the construction done and just kind of wait on the, you know, whenever the governor allows us to do the, you know, special permits. Um, now, with you guys doing these applications via Zoom, is there is that would that be like a public announcement we should just look out for, or if that ends up happening? What do you mean pu public announcement for what? If you, because you know, part of the discussion is you might try this via Zoom. So, is that something we should just touch base with you guys on a regular basis, see if you're doing that yet, or would that be known publicly that you guys are going to be doing these permits via Zoom? Is there the oh. permit hearings? I think maybe. You were obviously who I was referring to when I said that you, you, you may yeah. be prepared to proceed at risk. Yeah. Um, if you don't have a huge investment in physical plant, uh, yeah. you, you don't need site plan approval. It just look just the um, the special permit under the uh, adult use uh, exactly cannabis bylaw. Yeah. Um, you could if you wanted to. You might be one of the exceptions that you could file an application for a special permit. Um, we might consider doing it, no, knowing you're doing it, as long as you know and acknowledge you're doing it at your own risk. Yeah. Okay. You might need is, to talk to someone a little higher up the ladder. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's definitely something we'll discuss internally. Um, what is the usual, usual time frame for a special permit application? Once you apply, typically one month later, we could schedule a public hearing. Okay. So All if right. you applied today, we would probably schedule a public hearing for a month from now. And then, you know, depending how the hearing goes from, and then you may or may not receive approval. And then of course there's the unknown appeal period right now. Yeah. So, yeah. so who, who would concerning. Who would the abutters be considered? The other businesses next to you? Yeah. No, they're not property owners. Oh, they I, I thought it was the businesses no. uh, within the mall. Property there, yeah. owners within 300 feet 300 of the feet, property yeah. of Hampshire Mall. So, so it's 300 feet within Hampshire Mall, not within the space that we'll be renting? Correct. Correct. Yes. Okay. So the law reads 300 feet of abutters, or property owners. So the okay. only people, the only institute, the only thing that could object would be the business, the uh, owner of the property. Okay. Well, there, there's 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 several businesses there. There's Target owns their own building. Yeah. I don't think it's 300 feet away. How close it's, are you it's to inside Target? the mall? No, forget about inside the mall. We're talking about the perimeter of the mall. Yes. Oh, okay. And notifying everybody who is an abutter to the perimeter of the mall, including Mountain Farms Mall across the street. Correct. Uh, Is, was there that vitamin shop pretty much in the middle of the uh, mall? Yeah, we're right in the middle, right next to, the, kind of near JCPenney. Right on the permit street. statute, it doesn't matter. We don't count where the 
we, we count the property line. Okay, uh, so that, the physical property line then. Target is, is in a unique situation because they own their own property within the property. Yeah. Well, I would think they are in a butter. Yeah. Yeah, but I, banks out in front, uh, yeah. McDonald's, Wendy's across oh. the street, AT&T. Yeah, there's a lot of them. They will uh, send them out. Have to send out. Sure. All those, uh, within, within the out, out, 300 feet of the outside perimeter of the property, okay. you go to the assessors, they actually have a little uh, map. So that they got a map. Okay. And then uh, as far as notification, certified mail? Cert uh, well, the notification is you give... A li two lists of abutters on mailing labels to the planning board chair, okay. which is me, and I will okay. notify the abutters and I will put the no the pr appropriate ads in a newspaper. Oh, okay, all right. So all okay. you do is give us the plans, the abutters lists, and show up at the public hearing once you get everything in the row. Okay, all right, sounds good. And pay uh, the filing fee. Okay, what is the typical filing fee? Uh, the filing fee for for the Special. I believe it will be about $350. Okay. All right. All right. Sounds good, guys. Thank you for your time. They, they, put a, they put a marijuana shop next to my office in Northampton, and they're lined up. It's going to be a hell of a business. Tax yeah. going to get all the taxes out of this one. Yeah. So we're, we're looking forward to so it. We, we are meeting the first and third Tuesdays of every month. So we'll be here okay. August 4th and August 18th if you want to come back. Okay. All right. That's good to know that I'll mark my calendar and, uh, you know, you do ask that you file your application at a meeting. <clears throat> okay. Actually, we ask that you send it in a couple of days in advance to me so I can circulate it to everybody. Okay. So we can all go over it to be sure it's complete. All right. So does it email you at the right email address I've been communicating with you? Yep. Okay. All right. The actual application, we also require some hard copies of plans and okay. hard copies of mailing labels. Once we, once you get everything and you decide you're going to apply, you could just mail them to me when the time comes. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Again, thanks a lot for your time, guys. Have a good rest of your evening. Okay. Thank you. Good night. Okay. Mr. Ken, finally. <laughs> Um, so I, while, while you were, um, you know, talking to that gentleman, I was looking at the guidance, um, and I'm not sure what applies. So the, with regards to the appeals, um, it's because of the fact that the appeals period leads to the recording of the special permit. And because the courthouses were closed at the time, it was up to May 4th. Um, but I know it had been further extended to July 13th. Um, but I'm unsure if um, that means that the appeal is um, now, now, now you can have your public hearings and then list um, and go through the specific process. Um, or if that means that, um, yeah, I, it, because it, it's tied to the Supreme um, Judicial Court, the, right. the appeals. A number of the, the courts are not fully open for right. routine business yet. Right. So, and, and then, so I, I think some other um, guidance shows that possibly August 10th would be when um, more activities would be allowed in the, the courthouse for recording. So um, I'll, send, I'll go ahead and send um, uh, Bill the, uh, that guidance um, and then some. Um, some uh, links with regards to the Supreme Judicial Court, um, with with which is specific to the recording aspect of of um, a permit. Um, we don't we don't have anything scheduled right now for the immediate future, but at, at our next planning board meeting in early August, we should have an idea of what the courts might be doing on the tenth, and that may change, and we'll take it as it as it need at that time. Yeah, and if you you know I. I've helped the community um, convene a public hearing. If the, the board wants, um, I can help assist, um, navigate and, and provide um, Jim like a script. It, it, it's, it's specific, there's like words you have to say and you know, the, the ways that you um, advertise the public hearing, you know, cause you're gonna be advertising most likely 
a, a Zoom address um, uh, because it's still going to be convened virtually for the most right. part. Um, so yeah, that's just um, a comment regarding. Oh, I that. I can uh, I can generate a Zoom meeting at any time. Yeah, and I can email Jim the uh, the text of it. And mm -hmm. I also have. Uh, I, I am the host of the meeting, so I have oh. the ability to mute anyone I want, um, <laughs> and I can end the meeting by clicking a button. Yeah. So if have you better. have you been Zoom bombed yet? No, no. we have not. That's good. <laughs> I think I've it been, helps. Uh, it, it's it's uncomfortable. Um, it helps only by other members of the board. That's only he's been Zoom bombed. That's all. <laughs> um, okay. So it's good to see you all and guys are doing healthy and uh, even what, we're five months? Six? I don't, I, I lost track of time here. Um, but we're definitely in a new fiscal year. Um, so I shared with um, Bill yesterday because I finally had the ability to go to the office and, and um, see where I was with regards to at, at least the activity we were doing regarding the definitions. Um, I believe at the last meeting, um, you pulled um, the planning board's uh, articles um, from your town meeting that you convened. Um, right. So I guess we'll work towards whatever you guys want for the um, for your next town meeting, um, yeah. which presumably would be the definitions. Um, and so I shared with Bill and I, it was yesterday, so I know that you guys haven't been able to look at it, but there wasn't much change from the the version that you saw back in in February. Um, the um, just to confirm the discussions that we had at the last meeting in February, um, and my com my notes um, and changes within the document that was shared with you uh, are reflected there. Um, so there was some minor changes um, based on that last meeting. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess, you know, it's, it's picking up from there and figuring out um, what still we may need to do for the definitions um, or if there's any other priorities that you may have at this point. Um, I'll add that, um, as I mentioned in February, there should be some, um, uh, some some more discussion on finalizing the stormwater regulations, um, Jim. So whether or not that's convening the working group again, uh, maybe through Zoom uh, for one meeting. Um, as a reminder, that stormwater regulations would be adopted by the planning board during a regularly scheduled public hearing, um, but doesn't need to go to town meeting. So. Um, you know, that there's a little bit more fluidity with that. Um, and now with regulations having to be adopted by June 30th, 2021, there is some time to play with, but at the same time, you probably just want to get this done with. Um, and I know that um, we're also trying to overlap it with the effort of um, planning board rules and regulations for the board. Um, so, those can probably play into each other um, as well. And we're also, also going to be, well, specifically the subdivision regulations that, which might require some tweaking to conform to MS4. Yes. Just a, just a couple of quick comments um, to keep it for everybody and for Ken. I did receive a email from David Nixon, the town administrator, and he's requesting, question of articles that we may, we may want for the fall town meeting. And he listed three items, the definitions that we put off from the annual town meeting, um, the details of adopting the zoning bylaw amendment to incorporate the inclusionary zoning uh, Hadley Trust Fund and how to calculate the fee and the adoption of Megan's Way, which is kind of both the selectmen and a planning board's item. But I think what you're working on a definitions, Ken, and I think the next one should probably be fine tuning um, the calculation of the fee for the inclusionary zoning to the Hadley Trust Fund so we can get that going 
in case something comes up. We've got some ideas, um, but they're all over the place. And we're just wondering, you know, what did, what are some other towns doing? I think we already asked you to look into that. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think where we left it because it was so long ago that we discussed this. Oh, um, I, I, had I know that, you Bill, you shared something. Um, right. I had that. done a search of uh, a state local bylaw website and pulled out the language that various communities were using, but it was all over the place. And I know that uh, Mike Sarzinski had been, had a proposal and we played with that a little bit. I don't remember how formalized that got. It was a financial calculation as opposed to being something that was, I would say, completely indefensible <laughs> mm -hmm. and you know pretty straightforward right and we, we, one of the things we need to decide on like from bill's point when he looked out he saw fees all over the place everything from so expensive that nobody would want to contribute to the fund to others that were so lenient that they would definitely want to contribute to the fund so that they were if we want to be someplace we want we want to encourage contribution to the fund but we also want it to be not necessarily painful but realistic in what yeah. things could be so not, we don't want to discourage we want to encourage i yeah. believe is our is our the planning board stance but we also want it to be somewhat realistic in what they're putting into it so so real quickly what i suggested is what is really being subsidized as opposed to how much do you have to put in you know three times somebody's uh, average income or whatever so what is really being subsidized what's being subsidized is the cost of building the property including land and the cost of that money which is more, more usually talked about as a mortgage interest rate and you amortize that over 15 years and that's the cost of the property and then the question is, what are you getting for that property? You're getting subsidized rents. So the difference then about in, in terms of what is being subsidized as opposed to what the cost of the property is, is what should go into the insurance trust. And it's financially, you know, you, you make some assumptions concerning interest rates, the cost of building. Uh, and uh, I, what I came up with was, a unit would cost 239 you know the cost of building i think we just de we determined i think jimmy told me that the wholesale cost of building was a certain amount per square foot right we said that we said that the building then was a two bedroom was going to cost $119,000 we said that the the lot for that would be $120,000 so the total cost would be $239,000 amortize that number over a 15 year period based on whatever the 15 year mortgage rate is at East Hampton Savings Bank or any bank you choose. That's the total cost. What are the rents going to be for that property over a 15 year period? And the difference between the two is what is being subsidized and what would have to go into the insurance trust. And the number, I don't have the number right in front of me because I wasn't prepared for this, but it wasn't unreasonable yeah. i think one year I'm, I'm not sure what it was but it came it was like 100 jesus christ i don't have the number here that was my notes but it wasn't it wasn't unreasonable it was in right. you know 170,000 150,000 which how much, how, much, how much came into the trust, do you recall, when we put the uh, units in, in the East, East Street Commons? Uh, it was something less, but then, uh, remember, that's a condo. Yeah. So you don't really have the same cost exactly. of land. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, I think it's around 350 Yeah, and I think my number was like 150 Thirty hundred and forty thousand would come in per per two bedroom unit. 
Yeah. Because that's what's being subsidized. The rent you're getting versus what it costs to build it. Okay. Build it. Very simple. It's defensible. So he, they're paying us $70,000 for each affordable unit that they don't have to build. Mm -hmm. And that comes, works out, um, there are five units, so that works out to $350,000. Uh, that may have been a pretty good deal. <laughs> no doubt about it. However, we had no idea how to. That's why we. That's why putting words in there is one thing. Yeah. We want a formula so that from now on, it's it's a real number that we can. Everybody's going to see when they try to do something. Yeah, Bill suggested at one point in time that something I said was perhaps arbitrary and capricious, and I perhaps agreed with him, but. What what these various towns are doing is certainly arbitrary and capricious. They're just pulling numbers out of the air and they're not defensible. What, are, what do they relate to? No, and you're right, Mike. We want to put something that's realistic, something that, that you can put your finger on and they they can calculate. So well, here's here's what here's what I here's what I wrote. It's, it's going to take me two minutes to read. Want me to read it? The amount to be paid. You didn't say the, the amount to be paid into the Hadley. Uh, Affordable, affordable housing trust shall be calculated as follows determine the total 15-year cost of the affordable housing unit including construction costs land costs i threw in insurance costs and taxes you don't necessarily have to do that this total would then be amortized over a 15-year period utilizing the then 15-year fixed mortgage rate as published by the east hampton savings bank throw in any bank you want change 15 to 30 it doesn't matter probably would there's a reason for 15 because perhaps that's a reasonable life of somebody living in an affordable unit. From one above, this is two, from one above, subtract the total amount of rents which would be paid over the 15 year period. Uh, this net number will be, will give the dollar amount to be paid into the insurance trust in present day dollars. So we're doing this in present day dollars. We're not, this is a very simple calculation. And that's what I was going to say. We would have an option if we wanted to put a premium on it to not to incentivize them to maybe build them instead of throwing the money into the trust. You could then um, interpolate that out for maybe five years uh, of inflation and add that amount. Well, see, the, I'm not worried about inflation. This is present day dollars. It's right. But if they give you those inflation. dollars, you're still going to have to go. We would, if we were going to go build it ourselves, it's going to take a year or two to contract, advertise, and all that to build it. So you could, if we wanted to, you know, take your calculation and then add on onto it. That's a you know. Yeah, you know, you, you know, you could, yeah, you could put a premium in. Yeah. You could say, and, and, the, the, and then put put twenty percent on top of this if you want. Whatever you want, but uh, that becomes arbitrary and capricious. <laughs> well, it, 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 it may be speaking to whether we have a need for more or not. And if we want them to build them, we can yeah. more of a premium. If we feel like we have enough, we sure. can decrease the premium. Well, I don't think Hadley wants to get in the business of building uh, affordable we, units. We don't, want, we don't want to build them. We want to use the money towards somebody else doing the work and owning them. Yeah, the, 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 so this is just a thought. Yeah, and that, thought yeah. Okay, we, we spent the enough idea was what is actually being we, we spent We spent enough. That's it. We spent enough on it. So get back to Ken I doing agree. his stuff. So we, yes. know we take up too much of his I time agree. doing this. Well, I think, I mean, I think we can present it, you know, if, it, if, it's, a, it's, if it's a matter of using um, Mike's suggestion, I mean, it, it you know, I think it alludes, it, it accomplishes what his what his um, his, uh, his 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 perspective of um, other ways to get to that well, number. Do you, do you do you agree? Uh, that Mike, 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 no, no, no more, Mike. Let Ken talk. Oh, he's, 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 he's editorializing. He's got an editorialize, and I'm asking questions. Okay. So okay. I've seen it. I've seen it done multiple ways, um, and I, I believe at the last meeting and and talking to talking to Bill, um, you know, either based on uh, industry standard of how much it costs to build a unit um, here in the Pioneer Valley, or 
based on uh, county data, something like that, um, versus a, um, a lump sum, how some communities have adopted that too, uh, whether or not, you know, it, it's, it, it, do, it comes down to management at the end of the day. Um, and the um, ability of the, uh, the developer to um, either want to pay that amount, um, which may be more so than um, what it may cost to build it, or um, build it, which you obviously want them to build as much as they can um, within uh, their uh, development plan. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think maybe we, what, what can be presented is two different definitions um, and the ability for the board to administer um, and understand those definitions because they're the ones that you, you guys are the ones that are going to be reviewing the application and should an applicant or a developer not want to build on site based on the requirements of the inclusionary zoning, then um, you just want to make sure that they're they're um, demonstrating that they would be paying into what that fund. Oh, well, I, I like I like I like Mike's formula for the simple reason that it's real and it represents reality as far as the numbers. Somebody's down Calculable, calculatable, and it shows you, um, you know, the developer doesn't like it, then fine. Right. It's too much for you. If you can build it for less and, and, and handle it, that's great. We want to make it a competitive option that, that they're, you don't win or lose by, but, uh, by buying out or by building on site. We, it's it purely comes down to a business decision of what works so it's all about the cost of money right <clears throat> after what mike mike's count mike's formula is pretty much this is well if you want to do it yourself if you can do it for less i mean significantly like, no, nobody's going to do it if it's a thousand or two thousand dollars less but if it's a big number that they think they can do it for less then fine you do it that way six percent for a 15-year mortgage and in, instead of two and seven eighths and the amount that would have to be contributed to the trust is probably going to be a lot more because rents aren't going to go up that quickly yeah so okay so you've got the, the definitions ken um can i just ask one more question on that matter jim sure i was just wondering if ken or if any of you could help anyone out there in Hadley who's watching us, help them uh, visualize how that money would be spent coming out of the Affordable Housing Trust. Who, I mean, we just said we're not going to use it to build ourselves. Who, you know, what are some of the scenarios of where that, how that money would, would go into the ground? There are several that exist already given examples um it, it's not supposed to be used for maintenance it's supposed to be used for capital so you could find a developer that i'll give you i'll give you an example the easiest example i can think of is the old Hadley hall a developer wants to refurbish the old north hadley hall into affordable houses of affordable apartments and it's going to cost them x amount we could take the town could take money from the affordable trust fund and give it to the developer to help defray some of the cost of making north hadley hall affordable um that, that's Gilbert. the best it's the most straightforward thing i can think of right now okay or if for example uh mountain view apartment complexes was going to be coming off the affordable housing uh, and go into market rate. And it needed some repair on a water line. So in order to, and this was negotiated by the town of Hadley, uh, we will repair your, and we will use that 
some that money if you would agree to extend your affordable housing for another five years. So it becomes an ec economic decision. <laughs> right. Thank you. Well, we don't, want to, we don't want to box ourselves in. We no. still want to have that option available to us. Right. So in, there in, in the extreme case, the town could put up affordable housing with this money and own it. But that would be something uh, that would be... We don't do well Mar yeah. <laughs> with real estate. It, it's town. just a possibility, but I don't think the town wants to own that kind of stuff. Right. No. no. So, we don't, uh, have, the, we don't have the manpower to run a project like that. Right. I also had a question for Ken on the definitions, if we're not done with that. Okay. Okay. Um, I, don't, I don't know if it was just in the formatting that I was reading the file that you sent us, Ken. Mm -hmm. um, but everything, the way I'm seeing it on my screen, they're all um, adjusted. They're all left justified aligned and there are certain areas where it says the following are let's say um, aquifer definitions the following are adult use definitions is there anything visually that tells you where the following ends and where you go back to general de definitions like are they indented under that heading or well, so what i originally because you use um you use your digital um yeah uh E360. Um, so in the case where it would be helpful for um, town meeting residents to um, see what changes you were making, I did at least create, um, and I don't know what happened, I'm going to try to pull up um, what I sent Bill yesterday, um, if for some reason the formatting went um, wonky. Yeah, um, I was thinking if you had sent a PDF, then the formatting would be locked in. Yeah, it was um, a Word document. So. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. So let me. What I'll quickly do is, um, Bill, if I may, can I share the screen? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, let's see. Where is this file? Let me just make sure here. Yes. Okay. You so sharing. So if you can just quickly see, I do have it listed as um, you know, you have it bolded where it says adult uses, and then we have the refer to section. Um, and then on the left um, side, I have these long lines. Oh, you've um, got lines, okay. And again, you know, obviously it's gonna look different on E360. I don't know um, how, yeah. you know, the people putting it together may want to display it, um, but because, <laughs> where you know we're lumping it based on the various sections of your current bylaw um it makes more sense to put it this way on at least paper yeah on for we don't want those long vertical lines in our zone bylaw okay okay so we'll have to figure a way of somehow else of some way of indenting it or something ken um yeah. what about colored boxes no colored but no colors um just hmm. indenting um okay you know, so like maybe this. maybe something like this um like well yeah. without the box without the bad be perfect yeah. Yeah. yeah without the box would be perfect without the color oh, like that yeah no that's that's great okay yeah that's simple okay i'll go ahead and do that for the rest of them i think okay. there was um i did have I don't know if I had any other comments um, here. Oh, I, this was a, a comment that just kind of, um, I don't know if we discussed it at the last meeting, it was specific to um, items that were, find, uh, that were found under sign related terms, under your sign bylaw, um, with regards to like public way. Um, and yeah, so was there, I guess that you want to keep it in there, like under the sign, or could it exist as a general bylaw for when you describe right of ways or public ways or streets? And that does seem like it's a commonly used for buildings. For 
So um, I know that um, as I put in my comment here, um, you do have streets identified as a def uh, street, road, or way. Um, so that, that is a definition that you had in the general definitions. Um, so suggesting that that may be redundant on the, the top. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if a, if a, like is Megan's Way a street, but it's not a public way. Megan's Way is a private road. You might want to put public way in <clears throat> in with the P's, and then say C Street Road or Way. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'll do that. Okay, um, and then just some, some leftovers with regards to your solar bylaw. Um, there were definitions of agriculture, building permit, contact information, impervious surfaces. Um, do you think that those are specific to solar enough that they should remain there? Or is it possible that those can be pulled out into? That, that should be in the general description. Okay. Okay. And I think that was, uh, and then this one, um, and let me just quickly see. You have, um, so I think there's a date that's listed in the bylaw. Um, or maybe, I don't know if this was, suggest a suggested definition um uh, great yeah i believe the date of adoption was 62 or 63 although i don't have that handy at the moment Okay, so we can fill that in. Um, yeah, okay. And I think that was it. Um, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll turn this around um, for reformatting to uh, remove the black uh, solid lines and indent um, and then pull out um, these various definitions and put into the, the general section as well as uh, move this public way in, into the general section. And I think, I think that's done. Um, I know at the last meeting, Jim, you said something about writing the warrant article language um, and what you would need to do specific to what you'd be removing from each section um, to- I, I, I had put all that together to remove okay. what to be removed and what to move around. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so then I guess, you know, I'll just turn this around and then, um, this should be ready to go unless there's any additional comments that um, you want to take one more quick look after I do the work uh, to see if it needs anything. Um, but I think for the most part, we are um, done with that project. By the way, I just found out, found my calculation based on this calculation over that period of time, the, the amount that would be contributed into the housing trust for one two bedroom unit would have been $129,000. Okay. Significantly more than 70. Yeah. So, okay. Mike, can you send me the language? Um, uh, because I, I, I quickly <laughs> jotted down, but I'm sure I don't have everything. Yeah, um, the language of, of what you were calculating. Um, Sure. I think, well, I, th I, think, I think we decided that we weren't, if we wanted to, we could ins include insurance and real estate taxes in the calculation, and that would boost the amount up. I think I left it out of this calculation. But Who, you, you, I, got a, you got a number of variables here. Everything can be put in or put out, depending on what your goal is. But I, I was surprised that it came out to 100. And I recall when it came out to 129,000, I said, geez, that's a reasonable number. 
<laughs> so, Mark, bear in mind that the the number we're getting from E Street Commons is from a condo development. So oh, you right, can't right. really price right. the land the same way you would for a subdivision lot. Okay. Yeah. True. But yeah, if anybody sees anything wrong with the analysis, let me know. I just tried to figure out what is being subsidized. And it's got to be the difference between two numbers. Uh, the all. only thing I can think that we might want to add is if we are doing it for a future condo development, we just might want to have, we, we have to have a, a way of calculating land value um, yeah. that's other than just a straight building lot. Well, yeah, I, I don't know if the developer would tell us what it costs. But you know, your condo has a percentage. You you have a yeah, uh, sure. you have a point nine one two zero percent of the of the condo. So uh, we could fact. There's a, there's a way to factor that in. Yeah. Mike's got a really good start to get this thing going. I was just trying. To I was just going to say something, that. something made sense. Yeah, fine tune it. Thank you, Mike. That was very helpful. And I Good think job, it, will, it should stand up in court. Well, we'll see. But oh, well, by the way, I was going to ask you, which law school did you go to, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> Whichever cereal box I got that week. Uh -huh. I was impressed. <laughs> yeah, I'll say, you know, um, that it's very creative the way that you've um, – are, are going to be putting this in your bylaw. I haven't seen it done like this, um, you know, and, and the examples that Bill provided to the board um, definitely don't, are not as articulate as the way that you've described it. Um, I think, you know, a, a general comment would be to ensure that if there's any standards, like if it's um, standards based on the locality, um, like, because you, you mentioned something about East Hampton Savings Bank. Um, maybe... Just yeah. Maybe if there's a general um, mortgage rate, I'm not, and, and I'm not sure about standards. I'm um, currently in the process of exploring buying a, my first home. So, <laughs> you know, I, I'm not very familiar with this and you guys are obviously giving me the knowledge. Um, but I, I guess that would be my comment would be if there are any ways to standardize where the data is coming from, um, that's probably the, the, the way that we should be going. You might want to do an average of three banks with offices located in Hampshire County. There you go. Something like that. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Or Fannie yeah, or typically, Freddie Mac. More, more, typically, mortgage rates don't vary greatly within an area bank to bank. I mean, there's a slight difference, but it's, it's, it's not a lot. You're not going to find two, three point differences. And I think I got the, the uh, rents from. Uh, the senior center. I said, "What's the rent for a two bedroom?" Right. And I think it was like nine hundred bucks a month. So, the rents over the fifteen year period were going to be one hundred sixty two thousand dollars. So let me do divide. How much is fifteen times twelve? One hundred eighty. One six two. So the rent was assumed rent was nine hundred dollars a month, and the total cost. Which comes out to 162,000 for 15 years. The total cost, including interest, not including insurance and taxes, was about 292,000. So that's the difference: 292 versus 162. That's that would, that's what that's what you put in. Okay, that's what's being subsidized. I think that's a real reasonable number to expect from something. So out of the six lots, each lot's going to be about uh, you know twenty thousand dollars. Yeah. For every six lots, they're going to put have to put an affordable unit in roughly. So, six Mark, seven. Can I it over to you now. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Okay, Ken. So, I think we're in fine tune the definitions. Um, just see if you can find anything, anything other than what Bill's found on. Uh, Anybody, anybody, any other towns or cities that may have something on contribution to the fund. Okay. Um, don't knock yourself out doing it. Because I think it may be, you know, 
just to see what there is, if there's anything. Sure. But, by the way, I spoke to a uh, colleague, uh, uh, Fred Barron up in Waitley, and he's on. He's one of the trustees on their trust, and they said they he's been they've been looking for places to spend the money. I didn't ask him how much, but they haven't come up with anything. So maybe they need some creativeness. Well, Bill, did uh, the the selectman appoint us as trustees? Do you know? He did. They did. Okay. And uh, also Christian Christian Stanley and um, David Phil. Okay. So all of us that are not trustees. Well, no, with the five five of us and so there's the seven person board at the moment. Ah, uh, I thought there only had to be I thought it was five people. I think it was a minimum, minimum of five. Ah, uh, okay. So we so, gotta run uh, past our compliance people because they'll pick up on it and we'll say, Why didn't you tell us about this? So you know they're did, they, did they appoint anybody in charge of it yet? No. They're just just five, just the seven of us. And, and this, uh, I, I said that I really was thinking of this as a, just as a, as a, uh, a startup board. <laughs> and well, that, it is. Uh, but, but, but what, what somebody's going to have to be overall in charge to schedule the once a year meeting just to cover the bases. That's all. Yeah. No, I'm sure that'll get taken care of. But uh, what, uh, what I was, talking about was we didn't actually put it out to the public for who would like to be oh, involved yeah. in a board like this. Right. Because this just had, to get the money into the town coffer. Yeah. Get, get hold of the funds. And then, um, you know, well, a year from now we can, uh, I, I think we were appointed for a two year term or something. Like okay. That. So, uh, next time it comes around, I'm sure they'll put out some advertisements, maybe expand the board. Maybe some of us will step back and just see what happens. Okay. And that's going to okay. be every, every every Friday at 5? Uh, <laughs> yeah. BYOB. Yeah. <laughs> BY, bring your own pizza. Okay. Um, away. Thank you, Ken. Do we want to schedule the next time that you come to meet with us? Or wait yeah. until we have some information? Um, I mean, we, we can, we can go ahead and do that. Um, I just wanted to, I know that Bill had posed, um, if there was anything regarding the tasks that we're going to look at this year, I don't know if that's going to be a further conversation for another meeting, um, for, yeah. So the work plan for this fiscal year, um, as well as, um, I guess if we wanted to talk about a timeline for I guess well I guess we'll work on the definitions and the stuff for the town meeting first yeah um, De definition the stuff for the town meeting the uh, the calculation for the fees next one would be updating the regulation for both subdivision and general regs for the planning board okay um, that'll probably take us take it be be busy enough for us for the time being we don't have a contract signed yet do we I don't think so. $7,500. We have been approved for $7,500 for this fiscal year, so probably want to get that going. So did I share that with you, Bill? Uh, I believe you did send it. Okay. Um, we've, we've had some transition issues here with, uh, with the uh, town accountant, so okay. uh, um, you could ask PVPC about that. Uh, we, we we use the accountant through uh, through your organization. Okay, <laughs> but so as far as the um, because I believe sharing the service agreement with you, I guess if it was a matter of ensuring you got the signature from your town accountant, I'll follow up with it. Yeah, I think we did. If I recall right, I I don't want to fumble through the notes, but I think we did authorize Jim to sign the uh, the contract on okay. behalf of the planning board. Okay. okay. Um, and then it just has to get the accountant's signature. And uh, of course, they, we didn't have the town meeting until uh, almost the end of June. So uh, um, there, I don't think there's been a chance really to get the um, get it verified. Okay. All right. But well, I'll other, follow up on it. But remember also, to the extent we're talking on uh, the stormwater regs, that gets billed to the MS4 uh, warrant article. That's correct. So, yeah. uh, so um, 
probably offline, Jim, I'm going to put Patty in touch with you with regards to the remaining stuff um, for the stormwater. That's right. Uh, and um, to, to schedule something. Um, I believe she mentioned to me that would probably require another 15 hours of her time um, to, to finalize things as well okay. as meet with the, with the working group. Um, but yes, that will be billed to that separate line. Do we have a contract for me to sign? Uh, I thought I had set one around. I'll, uh, I'll take a look. Okay. Did the MS4 deadline, did the state push that a year? Yeah, to 2021. So is that, yeah. is, is that going to get uh, a COVID push, do you it, think? It may. <laughs> um, but the, board, the the town already approved the new MS4 we're, we're okay by, with it. Oh, yeah, we, we, We're ahead of it, yeah. yeah. We've adopted the bylaw. We just need to adopt the regulations to uh, uh, utilize the bylaw properly, if you would. Correct. Right, right. And has anyone heard, is town meeting still late October? Uh, I'm nothing specific. Okay. Yeah, all, all the letter that I, the, the email that, that uh, David Nixon gave me was sick, strictly addressing a fall town meeting articles. No dates mentioned. Okay. So they're just planning ahead, that's all. Okay. Um, how about we tentatively set the, this is June, July, the, set, the third Tuesday of September for you, Ken. The that's second a, that Tuesday. That sounds reasonable, Bill. Oh, third Tuesday, yeah. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds fine. Okay. Um, yeah, and so just, just let me know how to follow up with the contract um, just so that I can charge my time appropriately. Okay. Okay. As long as Bill finds it, I'll, I'll I'll print it out and I'll sign it and give it to the get it to the accountant to sign. Okay. Great. And I'll get it. Then we'll get it to you somehow. Great. Back Thank to you. you. Maybe even electronic. Could will electronically do for you for they're all signed. That, that that will yes. Okay. Scan and sign. Okay. Yeah. We can do that. Okay. Great. Well, it's good seeing the board. Have a good evening. Thank you. Have a good one, Ken. Thank you. Thank all you, Ken. Right. All right. Um, couple items. Mr. Michelson, we had originally scheduled to continue his public hearing um, for his accessory apartment at Grand Oak Farm to the third Tuesday of August. He has sent me an email requesting that it be, he has hired an attorney um, and he has requested that we he continue his hearing to sometime in January. 2021. So right now I'm going to schedule Tuesday of January um, 2021, and I will forward that email to the town clerk bill and to the rest of the board. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the request. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Let's see. Do we have a date for the? Let me just go to my calendar here. Um, I believe nineteenth. The nineteenth of January. January nineteenth. Okay. And let's see. I already talked about the article for the town meeting. I don't think we anticipate anything besides those three right now. It's probably going to be a frugal meeting again, I'm going to guess. Much like the uh, outdoor one. I don't know if it, I'm hoping by then we can have at least a indoor one. Oh, could be cool in October if it's then. Mm -hmm. Um. I have nothing else. I, I have nothing else. I, I have, we have not afforded the uh, position to the Community Preservation Act, the Planning Board representative. I would like to nominate Mark Dunn for the Planning Board representative to the Community Preservation Act. Okay. 
I'll second. second. I'll I'll second. Okay. Um, Mark? Did uh, you accept? Yeah. Okay. I'll accept that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Very good. Thank you, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> We'll see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, anything else from anybody? No? No. Okay. Don't hang on, Mark. Don't hang up. I want to talk to you. Okay. And Joe, okay. hang on for a sec. Okay. I want to talk to you too. Okay. Motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is history. Thank you and thank you, John. <laughs>